Hello and welcome to Yale TV. I'm Madison Battaglia and I'm joined by Rachel Treisman and Jean Sway who broke the story on the new Yale Law School Dean. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Can you please talk about Gherkin's background and history? Sure. Um, so yesterday, Peter Salove announced that Heather Gherkin will be replacing Robert Post as the Dean of the Yale Law School and Post served for eight years. Um, and it's exciting because Gherkin is the first ever female Dean of the Law School. So she specializes in election law and constitution law. Um, she has been at Yale since 2006 and before that she was at Harvard. And before teaching, she actually practiced law, um, so she brings diversity of experiences. She also served as a senior legal advisor for President Barack Obama's 2008 and 2012 uh, presidential campaigns. And last year, she served as the co-chair of the law school's Diversity and Inclusion Committee, um, which released a report in March with over 60 recommendations for promoting student and faculty diversity. What are some of Gherkin's priorities for Yale Law School? So Gherkin has a long list. She says she's going to keep talking to alumni and students to, um, to figure out what she's going to bring to the law school. Um, so two of the things that she stresses on, on, on her list are the first, uh, Fab and Diversity. She was co-chaired of the um, Diversity um, Committee. And also, she wants the place to be as inclusive to the students who might be the first lawyers of their family as to the students who might already have um, professional background from their family coming into the law school. With Trump's presidency and new immigration policies, what is the future of law schools in general, in particular for Yale Law School? This is a really interesting question. People think the rule of law and the role of law schools are really important since a President Trump is elected. Because we can see that in the several days of her, uh, his presidency, he has already issued a bunch of executive orders, like adopting the role of the judi and also adopting the role of the judicial branch. So Yale Law School has been really vocal in pushing back against some of his executive orders that people may think are unconstitutional. For example, one of the Yale Clinic actually helped file the first challenge against the, uh, pre President Trump's immigration ban. And Gurkin herself is also involved in this legal battle. Her clinic, um, the San Francisco Affirm Affirmative Litigation Project, can help fail the first um, um, legal challenge against the sanctuary city executive order. Um, people think this is a really important time for the rule of law and for the law school to have a strong voice and have a strong leadership. And people believe that she is, the she is that voice. Yeah, and it's interesting, uh, President Salve noted in his email that it's pretty rare for a dean to also be um, in charge of a clinic and to maintain both positions. So that's a really exciting thing. Um, and I think just to reiterate, at this political moment, it is exciting to see um, the first woman dean of Yale Law School. I think it's like a very good symbol for someone who stands for diversity and inclusion, and it really bodes well. Thanks for joining us. And from everyone at YTV, thanks for watching. It's at Yale, over. Um, let's start with uh, Easy. Yeah, um, so I think that um, the Kaplan naming was really important. I think it's ludicrous that we had his name on our campus for so long because when you name an institution or a building on this campus after a person, like